Yeah. 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 We're recording. Yep. So I'm playing the All right. Welcome, welcome, welcome back from the break. And welcome to everybody on Zoom. Uh, as you know, uh, a successful field day doesn't really happen accidentally. It takes the work of a lot of people. And as long as I've been the chairman of field day, I've always had the philosophy that uh, uh, nobody really works crazy, crazy hard and kills themselves. Just, you know, I'd rather have, you know, many people do a little. And, and it's really great if you can, when you come to field day, uh, you know, volunteer, to do something and we and contribute. And that's how you really benefit from field day. You really benefit from field day by participating in field day, you know, more than just going and observing. I'm a scout leader. I don't know if any of you guys ever scouts, anybody ever been in scouts? Uh, anybody ever been an adult scout leader? Yeah. Okay. We have a saying in our troop, and I tell all the new moms this, especially when their 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 young child is ready to go on their first camp out. And what I always tell them is, you know, scouts is a safe place to fail, and uh, it's a safe place to fail. And I also tell them. I assure you, I'm going to bring your son back with the majority of the blood he left. <laughs> so, they like the first one more than the second. Yeah. Field day is a safe place for everyone. I don't want you to think, oh, I just got my license. Okay, I got my technician in general on the same day in Alaska. They wanted me to take my extra, but I did. Took my extra four months later. But right after I got my general, like three weeks later, it was field day. Now, what do you think about living in Alaska and working field day? <laughs> do you think we had a little bit of action? I can tell you, you have not lived till you have participated in a field day in Alaska. Because you are busy constantly. I was a new ham. I haven't been a ham that long. I was a new ham. I just got my tech and my general, and I was working Iowa, Iowa, Iowa. And I did that for about six hours an hour. And it was one of the best times I ever had in my life. And I could just tell you that that is. And what was great about that is my elder was right next to me, helping me along every step of the way, teaching me rhythm, teaching me all this stuff. So field day is the best place if you're a new ham or you're even thinking about the hobby and you're watching this video and you just want to come and see what we're all about. And maybe get on a, a go to station and get you right on the air. But the point of field day is not, oh, I, I'm not going to sign up to operate because I can't keep up with, you know, the, the gym, gyms of the world, you know. Well, sure you can. <laughs> he's getting a little older and slower. <laughs> no, he's not. He still wants to be away. <laughs> but the point is, the point is, field day is a great place. And it's the last place you want to think about, you know, I'm not going to go and, and sign up to operate because I'm not comfortable. But guess what? Even if you don't want to operate, there's a lot of opportunity there. And that's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about the planning we've done so far, the framework we use. I like to refer to field day in this, how I do it as a framework, because I can get hit by a truck today and you can lift up this framework and, and, and really have, have field day work for whomever, whomever decides to do it. So that was a really long introduction. I only have four slides. So it's not going to take too long. The, the when, right? When, when's this going on? Uh, what's going on? Field day is the fourth full weekend of every June. It's the fourth full weekend of every June. Thank you so, so much for doing that. Uh, 
What do you know? It's 2023. Yeah, I, I put that QR code there on purpose. And, and that, that, that QR code is on our field day flyers that's going to be posted tomorrow. Tomorrow, I'm going to have a major update of the field day page. Um, so, yeah, we, we're, we have the PDF flyers. Uh, my son, uh, when, uh, he's an art student at VCU, majoring in kinetic uh, imaging, and uh, he, he, he helped out a little bit with some of the work. Um, but uh, Friday, June 23rd at 4 o'clock at the Early Snow Volunteer Fire Company, we're going to begin setup. I get off work at 4, and I live about 5 minutes to the fire company, so 4 it is. I wanted to make it early enough in the day that we weren't there too long. This year, we are going to set up as much as possible on Friday. We have a porta potty coming on Friday. We've got our tables coming on Friday. Uh, everything is coordinated for Friday afternoon for setup. We're going to set up everything but the radios and the computing network. But we'll set up the tents and all that. The tents, of course. The first thing we're going to do is set up the tents. So we're, we're going to set up, we have three tents, two for operating, one tent for dining. So we're setting up the tents for uh, Friday. Good news on the antennas. We stopped recording now. <laughs> Good news on the antennas. Everything is still in the trees from last year. So you can keep your potato launcher at home and I'll keep my bow and arrow at home. I'll bring it just to this one. Uh, so that's also good news. So the antennas should go up pretty quickly. Uh, this year, we also, uh, a little more, a little more planning on the antennas. Uh, I went out and measured and got some coordinates and some bearings, so we know how far from what tree to what tree, uh, what the general direction the antenna would go, uh, etc. So set up this Friday. There is an online volunteer form you can go to, and I'm going to show. And if you go to that. Website, That will take you to the three sign up for us. We're going to talk more about that in a little bit. Actually, it's not uh, where you can sign up to what you want to do at field day, uh, which begins at two o'clock on Saturday and ends at two o'clock on Sunday. That is the 24 hour event that we call field day. Now, Saturday morning, prior to that, we are going to be setting up the, the transceivers, we want some radio checks, uh, uh, we're going to be setting up network, make sure the logging software is working real well, so that, that's all going to happen Saturday morning, okay, but by and large, we'll be set up what night are going to be Saturday morning. Saturday morning did I forget to put it? I know, oh, yeah, I did not put it there. Maybe eight o'clock. Saturday morning, yeah, probably eight or nine. I, I get up at 4 30 every morning, so I'll probably be there just watching deer run around in the field. But um uh yeah, eight, eight or nine, uh right around in there. Larry's gonna have some uh Larry said we're gonna what did you say we're having lamb on a spit Saturday yeah. 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 to go with the clock. Yeah. <laughs> So there will be some light refreshments there, of course, to keep us motivated. And a lot of water. Yeah, for hydrate, hydrate. And mosquitoes and ticks and all the usuals. And oh, by the way, careful going in the woods this year. I just heard the highest copperhead incidents we've ever had. And they've been tracking them. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, we're no copperheads allowed to field day unless they know how to operate CW, <laughs> which is harder since they have no harm. They get to use their tail. Um, then, um, so the picnic is going to be at, I just got a visual of the copper and trying to run a key. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, the, uh, picnic, yeah, 
So that, why are we having a picnic at noon? What are you talking about, Bob? No, we usually have an evening meal or early evening meal on Saturday. As you all know, and I've mentioned this in the past, uh, early so volunteer fire company, there is a wedding going on, hence the fortifying. So the wedding is Saturday, okay? They're probably going to start pouring in. I reckon the service is usually at noon or one o'clock. So uh, they're probably going to start pouring in probably around two. And I understand they're going to have the, the hall, the banquet hall, for the bulk of the evening. So what about parking? Okay. Parking, there's going to be signage. We are actually going to be parking when you drive into the early zone. Don't drive into the garage. They go like that. When you drive around the, uh, the building and go all the way to the back, the rear left, of the parking lot corner. You guys probably all know where I'm talking about. You know, you got the VFW shed right here. Oh, I'll do it like you're looking. VFW shed sit right here. You just drove in. You're at the very back of the parking lot. This corner right here. I've already tested it with my Honda Accord. We can drive in right there. On the grass. And on, we will be parking on the grass. And we're going to be, and it's going to be marked with pylons. And we are going to be parking on the lower side between the, the wood line and that platform they have where they do training. All right. Everything's going to be marked. It's going to be easy. This is for Saturday afternoon only. So if we come to set up Saturday and we're, you know, we're setting up, we're all probably going to want to move our cars down to the grassy area, park down there on the grass, you know. And then what we're going to do is uh, encourage, you know, new people, uh, people that come, they'll have signs, signage directing them. The okay. field. Hence the picnic is Sunday. But That's on. why the picnic is Sunday. So uh, what, and we're going to talk more about every one of these areas in a little bit. Uh, but the big deal is visit that page for all the field day information. And visit the link at the bottom of that page, or I'm going to have information specific to members. There are three signups for field day. Okay, there's a volunteer sign up. I created an operator sign up. That link is there right now. And I created uh, the, uh, uh, the, the sign up for the meal for the picnic. So it's basically a member number of guests and what side is. right so so the operator schedule is are you working phone cw are you logging for somebody doing cw i don't know if anybody will do cw this year it's kind of a dying mode <laughs> and then uh love you guys and then <laughs> and, and uh but that's really a fun thing. Logging through CW is a lot of fun. I, I've done that with notes before. Yep. And, and uh, so there's the operator sign up there. But the big news, this is super, 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 super important. Everybody can really close attention. So, okay. This year, it is, it is mandatory that you please sign up for the thing. So when you go to that, and if you're not able, to get to that page or for whatever reason, email me directly and I will make sure you're signed up. But if you're a member, you need to sign up for the picnic. And uh, we're, we're going to talk about guests too. This year, you're allowed to bring uh, yourself and your partner and any family you have living in your residence is fair game. So uh, if, you're, uh, if you're a family with a couple of children, and they're all on the same route, bring them all along. It's fine. We'd love to have to know though. We do yeah, the only thing is we need to know okay. by Wednesday, the 21st. Yeah. So Wednesday is the drop dead for sign up for the picking. All right. So a week from this, a week from tomorrow, you need to be signed up for the yeah. yeah. reminder email. Yeah. Yeah, there's gonna be emails coming out. You don't have to remember. But uh, but it's all on the web page and uh, everything is there. So I wanted to just mention that. The reason that we're needing that information is so we know how much food. Right. Yeah. We're, we're doing the registration so for the deal, so we know 
Um, oh, by the way, it's chicken and pizza this year. It's chicken. Chicken and pizza this year. Oh. And I mentioned that it's chicken and pizza. Oh. And bring an appropriate side. Yeah. Okay. And it is dry, so no, it's not pizza and beer. Uh, bring, bring your appropriate side. Salad, veggie, veggie tray. Hey, well, yeah, when, we, you, when you come in, it's all, it's all there. go up the other way. Okay. Right, so okay. I talked about participants. Right, they've got a lot of debris in front of the door. Well, the very next slide is going to show you. You got it, babe? To what subcommittee. So the best okay. way to participate. Come, come around the upper part. Is go ahead and volunteer. All right. I'll talk to you later, baby. Volunteer sign up. Bye. And if you want more information, you can contact the appropriate committee member on the next slide. Um, for, oh, and by the way, this presentation will be up on our website. So it'll be there for you. Uh, if you want to operate, it's really fun to learn the rules first. So to get on the ARRL site, that's ARL.org slash field day. Everything you could possibly want to know is there about field day. And uh, also, if you get QSD magazine, Larry was kind enough to bring this in. Uh, this was the supplement for the June QSD. This is super nice. I really like this. It's only seven pages. It's nowhere near as long-winded as I am. Uh, it mentions tips for success. Uh, field day safety, we're going to talk about that. But here is where it talks about the bonus points and how they add up. So feel free to uh, read these. Uh, it's, it's just uh, this is a really good supplement that they put in QSC magazine. And I really strongly encourage you to have a look at that. Okay. Um, we are operating as three hours. What does that mean? Three up. We're, we're a club with three active transceivers. And we can mix up what bands we're on 20, 40, 15, whatever, 80. Uh, we can mix up what modes we're using. It's just three at a time. But it's no more than three at a time, not counting go. Yeah. To get out of the air station is seven. And not counting VHF. And not, yeah, you're going to print VHF. But the VHF can't go through a repeater. It has to be so close. So, uh, but yeah, all the modes. And we, we, we actually do a pretty neat job of uh, digital now these days, uh, digital phone, you know, side game for us. That's a thing. Uh, there's a, uh, help me out, Dennis. Uh, that it, it got up and Dennis does. Uh, that's going to be there. Uh, go to this year, the big rule change. The big rule change is GOTA is worth five times each QSO. Now, I learned something I didn't know about GOTA. And you guys probably did. You're going to, Bobby, hey, yeah. I've always done that. I did not know that if you were, if you got a license within the last 12 months prior to the last field day, you can operate GOTA. Or you could have not been in hand 20 years ago, but you've been inactive. You're right. Or you, you've been inactive and you've reacted. So if you are a new amateur radio license operator and you have gotten your license since the fourth full weekend of June 2022, we are going to duct tape you to the go to chair <laughs> and we will bring you lemon spritzers to keep your voice fresh. And you know you operate at six hour intervals. We'll give you a twenty minute break, and then you come back. Yeah, you can still operate for mainstay. Yeah. Do you know anybody? <laughs> You've got a wonderful voice. And by the way, I'll be totally honest. What do we all know? <laughs> it's true, right? Yeah. If you are a female during field day, you will have constant cues on the side. Constant cues, constant cues, constant. You will work the most. So you're going to be on GOTA working cues of that. <laughs> but it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, so 
uh, as an individual, you can operate from your house. Uh, if you're on Zoom and you don't want to come to field day, that's fine. Maybe you're allergic to field or days. Uh, you can operate out of your home. And a lot of us did during COVID. But what's neat since COVID, if you operate out of your home, all you do when you submit your score is declare what club are you associated with. A drop down there, yeah, it's a real simple drop down choice. And then those those contacts you made actually are aggregated with ours as well. All right. So uh, so you can operate as an individual. One comment on that Bob is the club for three that are listed in Belmont. Belmont right answer reading. Right. Okay. Albemarle ARC and Albemarle Radio Society. We went out of North Carolina. Yeah, yeah, we, will, yeah we will give you instructions on how to log uh, your, your score, uh, which would you love to pick. Uh, <laughs> I want you to participate is read and respond to any committee or subcommittee emails from field day. And there are going to be a lot more coming out very, very soon. Best thing to be there Friday at four, because Friday at four, most of the fuel day committee is going to be there, and Friday at four, you can ask somebody, "Hey, you know, you, you know, where, where are you right now?" Because by Friday, we'll know what operator slots are open. We'll know really what we need for the next day for volunteer. It's a great opportunity to find out what's going on. Oh yeah, and setting up the antennas on Fridays all oh, yeah. uh, that, that, that's a lot of fun. It's not going to be nearly as adventuresome. You know, we're not going to get bit by copper as you get poison ivy because all the lines are already in the creek. So, the uh, the hex beam, we may use a push up hex beam, but we may just go end to end dipoles and call it good. Dennis says we're going to do end to end dipoles, dipoles, and call it good. Do you like some of those lengths I showed you? I think some of them will work out. Okay. Yeah. Um, that's it. So, the big thing is show up, contribute, and enjoy. And it, and it truly is a lot of fun. And, and you meet some of the coolest people. You know, I, I have a little thing that I do, even though I'm working a really fast file. Because part of field day is people tell you where they are. You know, copy three alpha Virginia. You know, because we're three A, B A. So copy three alpha Baker Alpha. And when they come back, and when they say copy whiskey Papa Alpha, Western PA, what do I always say? It's a mercy. We didn't say anything about interaction with the wedding party. Okay. Some people are concerned about the wedding party. Uh, if we could get them on the go to station, they can party all night. <laughs> no, the, the, the concern about the wedding party is a couple. One is the noise level. I don't, has anybody ever been in the banquet hall at the Early Hill Volunteer Fire Company? Okay, a mouse could pass gas and it will reverberate for five minutes. The acoustics are horrible in there. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I assure you, I played, I, I was a union musician when I was 14 years old. Very good federation musicians local 187. My claim to fame is I was in a band with Trent Red. So what I can tell you is at the school, what I can tell you is the acoustics in there are worse than this room. And I guarantee you, if they were to turn up the music, whether they have a DJ or a live band, they aren't even going to be able to talk to each other two feet away. They're, that room does not support loud music. Coming from somebody who's set up a lot of audio. So I would be shocked if they bothered us. And let's go the other way. Are we going to bother them? No. We are not going to bother the wedding party. We're going to park where we're supposed to park. We're going to use our porta potty, and we don't have a reason to go into the fire. I am working on the ice. Don't give up on that. But <laughs> I need you to say that. But but otherwise, now will we bother them with our transmissions? What's our watt limit on hundred watts? Okay, what does digital usually run? Somebody tell me. 50 watts. Half a watt, quarter watt, two watts. 
This year we've been able to do very well with just 20 watts. 20 watts. So the chances of us, and, and by the way, that by the way, the fire company building itself is properly wired, it's steel, you know, it's modern electricity. I don't see us interfering with them. Now, if they if we do interfere with them and they come back with a five nine and you know Virginia, we're gonna log the queue. But I, I don't I really don't anticipate us having a problem. If we do, what do we do? We adapt and adjust. We reduce power. Or we reduce power, we come up with something. Or you know what? Yeah, maybe we take a break and eat chicken for a while and go out and get some Friday, Saturday. But but the point is, I'm, I'm it's a good thing. Are these concerns valid? Yeah, we should think about them. But I don't think we should bother them. But I don't think we should worry about it. I don't think we should worry about it. But we're not going to invite them to operate with anything. Really no, happy. we're not we going to leave them alone. Right. Unless they come back and go, what's going on? Then we give them a script for go to. <laughs> All right. So this is this is kind of the strategy for success, right? This I show this every year. Every, you know, everybody does what? No one person owns everything. You know, my job as committee chair is that I don't own everything. I just make sure everybody has everything they need to be successful in their area. You know, I'm a facilitator. I facilitate communication. I facilitate resources. If somebody has an issue, we're going to resolve it. Then prior to this meeting, I sent out an email a couple of days ago to the field day committee. I said, does anybody have any issues? Because we're not going to go into issue detail at the Monday night or the Tuesday meeting. Okay, we got all our issues ironed out. But at this time, I'm going to open it up to the field day subcommittee members uh, that want to talk about uh, their various areas. I've already talked about the facilities and how that's going to work and how our setup's going to work. Uh, I take care of point tracking, and I also have built the operator schedule, and it is online as of about two hours ago. <laughs> so that's my report that I've, I've completed mine. Dennis, do you want to talk about and well, let's go to Larry. Larry, tell us about food, Larry. Um, it's it's I'm still a, a work in progress, and I certainly would welcome anybody who wants to help out in terms of setting up the table. We're going to need ice and things of that nature, which may or may not be available from me. Well, remember though, the field we will need ice for Saturday, but yeah. well, and Friday, Sunday, okay. Sunday for the regular one. Um, well, actually, Friday for so lunch on Sunday. Uh, Looks like it's a good hand. I think uh, we'll be all right. Again, it's just setting up. Uh, and when you bring a sign, think in terms of well, how many are you? And think in terms of maybe going to the deli at a local at a local grocery store. That would be sufficient. You don't have to slate over a a, uh, a stove or something like this. It is a picnic, so deli food is great. And usually enough sufficient for say three to four people besides yourself. That should cover enough food, more than enough. And but we need to know how many people are coming. Is that for me to then make the order for the pizza or the for the uh, chicken. Otherwise, uh, is a it's going to be a problem. So I do appreciate if everybody would please get your if you're not coming. We need to know that too, but uh, let me know by Wednesday at the latest so that we know who's coming and what you're providing and signing. That would help me tremendously. Okay. Well, let me let me make sure I understand. Larry, do we need to know if someone's not coming, or do we only really know they are coming? I think we need to know they are coming. Do we? I don't think I care if somebody's not coming. I don't care. Oh, they're me. Because that means there's going to be more pizza, more chicken potential. Um, someone may bring an olive platter. You know, the more people that come, the more likelihood there will be an olive platter. Yeah. Not that I would drop a hint about what I would really enjoy, but I'll put that in. There, is, there are olive platters. Um, 
So yeah, let's just count on people that, that come. I know Dennis, why don't yeah, we also set up. Yeah, we don't we don't have access to the table for here. Yes, we do. We do have it. Yes. Okay. The uh that, that, the party delivering the I'm glad you mentioned that. So, the party that is delivering the pork body is also delivering six folding picnic tables. Have you seen the, the big lights, what those lifetime, you know, lifetime tables, yeah. little white lifetime tables? Yeah. They make large commercial grade folding picnic tables. And we're getting six of those. Uh, and so, oh, we also get it. You get, do you want to say somebody that it'd be nice if you brought your own chair? Yeah, okay. it's always, yeah. Well, field day anyway. Field day. It goes without saying. If you come to field day, you might want to bring a camp chair with you. Or even a folding bridge yeah. chair. Right. Yeah, and then mosquito repellent and all the uh, <laughs> Okay, let's move on to Dennis. Dennis, you've already mentioned uh, the publicity and the invitations and the uh, Newspaper and the radio spot. Uh, Dennis, why don't you tell us about the antennas? Okay, so this year the big change is we're not going to use the hex beam. And rather than beat this to death, the, the nice part about not using the hex beam is that we're going to have multi band antennas hooked to each radio. So in the previous field, we have to go around, unplug an antenna, say, Can I use 20 meters? Can I use it? So I think this year is going to go a lot smoother, but each antenna will have multi-band 80, 40, 20 with bread butter bands. And, and I don't, you know, we just got 50, but 80, 40, and 20. We got three stations, 80, 40, and 20. And then the go-to station will be um, an end bed and that. It's not so going to be as high, but we'll see what we get. Yeah, so we could put that on uh, on forty. I think that works out. So uh, that's a big change this year. So no hex beam. And the other good thing is uh, the hex beam has what eight dB of gain. So pointing the eight dB gain at the wire antennas was not that fun. Was not fun. Yeah, right. That's all I have. Okay, great. Uh, let's move on to. Uh, uh, Ed's on his phone, so I'll go to Ed. What do you got for safety? Safety, I'll be using the standard AWR checklist. And then again, I'm going to be safety officer, but when I decide to operate or go home at midnight, I'll designate safety to someone else. And the safety rules, they're long, but the bottom line is drink a lot of water, human safety, you know. Obviously, we're going to stop operating and not stand under a tall tree. There's going to be lightning. Don't store gasoline next to the generator. You shut the generator off and it will be cooled up. So we want to make sure our coaxes don't present a tripping hazard. And if they have a potential tripping hazard that we can't avoid, we want to flag the wires and everything. So what, what the, the point of the safety officer is... Uh, safety. I mean, remote, safety is really super important for field day. We are going to have a, uh, you know, in a sleeve, but the safety officer checklist on a clipboard. Okay. And that clipboard is always going to be available. So, so we know what the safety officer's duties are and the checklist. Uh, we will have a safety officer. I have several vests. The club owns several vests. So just look for the person wearing the vest, and that is the safety officer. Um, or perhaps a day low hat. We'll see. Uh, something fashion. Uh, not too bad. Not too fashion. But fashion. You could take it. Um, so that's the safety officer. And, and that is a position you can sign up for. If you want to sign up, uh, when you go to the sign up sheet, uh, you can sign up to be uh, to do safety officer relief. I usually end up being the safety officer during the night because there aren't many of us that are there. So I keep myself safe, you know, avoid the coffee skulls and that sort of thing. All right. Um, I know Rich is on a call. Rich, did you have any idea for uh, 
for uh, your greeter this year. We're going to have a table set up for you with all the usual pamphlets. So, uh, John, can you help me switch to Rich? Uh, uh, Rich will have to unmute himself and start talking. Okay, I did. Can you hear me? Yeah, we hear you, Rich. Okay. Yeah, uh, a table with a clipboard and maybe a, a, a sheet there where we can, uh, the people can sign in with a telephone number, uh, email, and possible members. Is that good? Yeah. The possible members. Members, oh yeah, yeah. Okay, that's a great idea, Rich. Yeah, we'll have a table for you. We'll have your the sign up sheet we usually have. Uh, and our pamphlets, our usual brochures. Usual brochures. Uh, I was at a yard sale uh, just a couple days ago, and believe it or not, they had two brand new large packets of that and glossy finish tri fold paper. I couldn't believe it. So uh, I can I can help with refreshing the brochures in time for field day. I'm going to recruit my son uh, to do that. Victor, he's we're getting, I'm learning a lot of work his way. I also Hi, have, you. But I also you have, you're working on possible new logos for the club. Something suitable that more like a branding. You started that right on right. unfortunately. But I, I can tell you that Victor's like a dog on the bone once you get him on a project. So what we're looking at is something suitable to put on a banner or something suitable to put on a cap or even a small enough logo brand to put on a badge or a shirt. So uh, Victor, I had charged him with branding for the club. I told him I want at least four designs. And at the next club meeting, I'd like to present them to the club and perhaps we can vote on what we like. So if we don't like any of them, we fire them and I kick them out of the house. So that's fair. Um, okay, uh, let's move on to Yoda and John. Or yes, uh, uh, we're uh, looking, well, I'm looking for people who can be coaches Fortunately, Bill has volunteered to help me out considerably, but there's always room for more. Uh, this is a case of where you're guiding, you're not doing, but uh, if you are good at HF, please share the wealth and help out the people that are, uh, are going to be doing GOTA. And the plan is to do work 40 meters and fed antenna using one of the club radios. Ed's, uh, Ed's gonna get that for us. Um, and uh, and hopefully we will be ready ready to go. We have all the materials. We have the scripts. We have the log sheets. We have all the information from previous years. So this is not a question of if you're being a coach, having to explain everything. We've got sheets that have here's what you say, here's what they say. It's all very well laid out. Thank you, Mike Ryan, wherever you are, Michael. Uh, um, I know where he is. Yeah, the uh, anyway, that's uh, uh, so I think I think we're in good shape there, but uh, but I'm really looking forward to seeing what Benjamin's going to do with education. All right, Benjamin, what are you going to do with education? Well, um, I'm hoping to do a uh, tape, tape measure, uh, Yagi build. So this will be in kit form, so it will be like. My goal is for it to be about a 15 to 20 minute build for a seven to 10 year old and a 10 ish minute build for an adult. We'll see if that actually works out. Um, but essentially, these pieces are yeah. all pre cut and made. And so it's more or less just a bolt again, which I'm trying right now. Uh, but I'm an adult. And yeah, uh, but. A lot of people wouldn't believe that, so we'll go with the fifteen to twenty. That's really but, cool. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's the idea is that we're gonna I'm gonna prep up a bunch of these kits and it'll look something like this, but it won't fall apart. And uh, and so uh, radio clips onto the back here, and uh, then we'll have just a little micro. And when I mean say micro, I mean like within the bounds of the area that we'll be using. At the field day site box line. We'll probably have someone kind of 
take the box and pick it up every 20 minutes, move it somewhere else. <laughs> Good deal. Um, and figuring that uh, I've been planning on being there at least right now, 2.30, 4.30 to kind of run this thing. We'll just sort of cycle. I'm going to bring a bunch of kids and then any anyone else that wants to participate will kind of just cycle people through. Okay. Okay. The club owns a box and we operate and get the new batteries and everything. And Mike, the pink person, I believe, yeah. I have it now. You've got it now. Is that the one that Mike was Yeah, that's, why that's like the one he gave me. It was. Yeah, that's it. Well, I'll transfer to accountable property records. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Oh, that, that, right. That, that's going to be great. That's and that Brian, you're wonderful. Yeah. Right? So it's going to be dummy loaded and everything. So we don't have to use like an offset attenuate or anything like that. Excellent. Excellent. Um, I brought a computer for you too. Yeah. Great. And, and we do need to talk radios as well. But yeah. Okay. All right. Great. Great. And I had an idea for education that you all can tell me what you think because we've never done a kind of before to my knowledge. Why not just have a short wave receiver there that they can tune through? You need mm -hmm. kind of I have one. I, I've got, I'll tell you what I've got. I've got a couple options. And I've got those, I've got that Wadanger duplicate you gave me. But I I've got the water down. Huh? I think that would water down. Why not roam around and watch field day? No, I'm talking to keep a kid this. Oh, for a kid. Okay, when you were a kid, who used to do AM DX? Raise your hand. I loved AM DXing at night, right? Maybe you want to. My, oh, <laughs> man. I, okay, nobody believes me when I say this, but in Homer, Alaska, at night, late at night, I used to get Pakistan on AM. Nobody believes me, but you can ask my. Any of my three sons, because they've all heard it. But there was an AM radio station in Pakistan that I used to get regularly in Homer, Alaska. Now, how that happens, I don't know. If you look on a map, it shouldn't. But I used to get it about every couple of days a month. I'd be able to get it. But anyhow, all I'm saying then is kids like to be kept busy. And if Benjamin, if you're moving kids through and there's some kid not doing anything, you know, and so all you do is you just put a little log sheet next to it, break down the call signs of the first thing that you're going to have to do and they're losing the mic. Be much, but as the day goes on, there will be, I don't know, it's just an idea I had. But even AM, these kids don't know what AM is. They don't know what a dial is. A lot of these parts don't even have to I know. So anyhow, it's just an idea I had. I am a Zenith Royal 3000. Oh. Yes. I have, the, I used to have 7,000. I got my Royal 3000 at a junkyard in Alaska and it's pristine. And it, it spent its life in a cabin in Alaska, uh, getting weather and, and news uh, from, from an old sourdough that lived out in the bush. So the reason I mentioned that is it might just be a fun activity. So I think we got generators and power covered. We probably don't need to talk about the network because you and I can, but the club doesn't need to know about it. But that's really all I have for field day. Uh, the biggie is keep your eye on our website, albemarleradio.org, and uh, and keep your eye on your email. So we have a could you do you transceivers? What trans could you mention transceivers? He, he sent out an email of what he's bringing. Yeah, I forgot. It. Are we going to use the club PS570 or should I bring this back up? Well, you're bringing the one for Goda. That's what we need for Goda. Yeah. Okay. I'll bring the the club 570. It's good. I have a small power supply that works. Yeah. It's switching and it's, it's not noisy. All right. Yeah, you're bringing the Jupiter. Whatever you want. The Jupiter. Yeah, the the Jupiter. <laughs> It's in the cut of the car. I'm bringing the Jupiter and they're going to be on his Jupiter. And, they are the and Dennis is going to be trying to keep up with us. <laughs> Jupiter, the Omni 7, and maybe the Eagle. Yeah, the Omni 7 is like, oh my gosh, Eagle's nice. Oh, Radio Envy, right? Would you like me to bring the Orion too? I'm going to be holding up. Okay. Yeah, uh, we should filter some band pass filters. Oh, yeah, did we check the band pass filters? 
who has the benefit. I have them. Okay. I don't need to know what bands they are, but they're in that plastic box. All right. You and I will probably do an inventory to yeah. pack up your car on Wednesday or Thursday. Right. Well, guys, uh, I do want to wrap up a monthly meeting. The field day committee is definitely going to have a meeting before field day. Should I see if you can clean with the act up? No, sure. Joe, you're going to bring yours back up. Right. Oh, bring it in. What's that? The meeting is officially adjourned. If anyone wants to continue chatting, we can. Thank you, sir, folks. All right. Still good for the time of being Bob. Yeah, I got two boxes full of upstairs.